Hi everybody, someone recently asked a question about my treatment approach to Bartonella and Babesia and I'm going to post a video about that. Um, before I get into the meat and potatoes of this, uh, as per usual, nothing that I'm saying should be construed as medical advice. This is all for informational purposes only. Um, please talk to your healthcare provider about um, your medical needs, please. Don't listen to me on social media for medical advice. This is again for informational purposes only. So Bartonella and Babesia, um, I typically use a three-faceted approach um, when it comes to addressing these microorganisms. Um, the first is working with antimicrobials, um, so things that are going to help to kill off these uh, microbes, you know, Babesia being a protozoa, which is a single cell parasite, um, Bartonella being a bacteria. Um, the uh, approach that I typically use is using herbs that help to uh, work to kill off these microbes. Um, some of my favorites are the ones that are um, inspired by uh, Stephen Buhner, this brilliant herbalist. Um, so that would include herbs like Cryptolepis, Alcornia, Ceta, Isatis, uh, Noclea. Those are some of the top ones that, that I would consider. Um, and it's important in my experience to make sure that the herbs are being dosed um, robustly enough. I've had patients over the years who have come in and they're on what I feel are the right herbs, but they're just on way too low of a dose. It's like, how are you going to kill off these microbes? You need a higher dose than that. Um, we'll sometimes complement that with intravenous therapies. Um, so like intravenous ozone therapy, for example, or if there's others, you know, intravenous artesanate is another option. There's, there's different things that can be worked with. Um, but uh, many patients, you know, where they live, you know, too far away or I'm consulting on cases, patients that live, live, you know, here, there, and everywhere, and they're maybe not able to access um, these types of treatments. The IVs are not mandatory by any stretch. Um, they just tend to act as an accelerator pedal to help get the microbial number down faster. So um, killing off microbes is the first facet. The second facet is working to mitigate symptoms. Um, for example, with Babesia, oftentimes the symptoms air hunger um, and the supplement and acetylcysteine can be really helpful in that uh, to help to address that symptom sooner versus later. Or sometimes we'll use you know, nebulized um, IV grade hydrogen peroxide or nebulized glutathione to help with that symptom. Uh, with Bartonella, it's not uncommon to see neuropathy so we'll, uh, I'll recommend um, robust doses of R plus alpha lipoic acid or methylcobalamin, aka methyl B12, um, or acetyl L-carnitine, and that can help to get the neuropathy on track faster. Um, or sometimes patients with Bartonella will have a lot of lymph node congestion and swelling, and that can cause pain and sinus issues and this and that. So I might recommend something called targeted dry skin brushing, or I might work with some herbs that help to get the lymph moving more effectively. Or sometimes we'll even do injection therapies with something called neural therapy to help get things drained faster. So there's different um, tools that we would use in that regard. Um, and kind of tied in like sort of bridges the root cause treatment, but also the symptomatic treatment, we'll be using low dose immunotherapy to help um, mitigate the inflammatory effects that are induced by the Bartonella or the Babesia. I posted about low dose immunotherapy a number of times before, so please feel free to reference those videos. Um, if anyone would like me to post another video about them, just post in the comment section below and I'll do that as soon as I'm able to. So first facet is kill off the microbes. Second facet is mitigate symptoms. And third facet is heal damage that's been caused by those microbes. Um, the primary things that I would do to be healing the damage is supporting the mitochondria in those patients. Uh, when folks are dealing with any type of chronic infection, their mitochondria, i.e. their little energy producing units in their cells, really go through the ringer. Um, their function is suppressed by those microbes. Their bodies are wasting a lot of energy, you know, putting out fires, trying to mitigate the damage and whatnot. And so the mitochondrial resources can really start to falter. So comprehensive support for the mitochondria, really important um, in many cases. I posted about that topic before as well. So please reference uh, those past videos uh, for more information on that. Um, or if you're so inclined, um, sign up for my newsletter and you'll get free access to my Overcoming Chronic Illness course. Um, the first two modules are free to newsletter subscribers. And there's a whole module on there about mitochondrial dysfunctions. So you can learn all about this in more detail and like a, it's like a two hour video or something like that because I'm, I'm a little bit long winded when it comes to these types of topics, including the mitochondria. Um, so uh, in terms of you know, healing tissues or uh, rather repairing damage, uh, the mitochondrial support tends to be very important. Um, and then there might be other things too, like for example, if there's been you know, joint damage that's occurred, you know, we might want to do some injection therapies to help uh, improve the joint health and integrity, or maybe work with things like glucosamine or MSM or hyaluronic acid or different joint support oral supplements or what have you. Um, but ultimately, you know, working to get the symptoms that are uh, rather uh, working to um, uh, 
make sure that the tissues are as healthy as possible, the systems in the body are as healthy as possible, so the patient's feeling a lot better. And that kind of overlaps with symptom treatment, right? It's like, okay, so maybe there's more microbe-specific symptoms like the neuropathy or the air hunger, but um, just overall, like, oh, I feel just really run down and crummy and brain foggy and just really off because I've gone through this chronic infection. Well, as we're healing the damage, you know, that's going to help to uh, address those symptoms. So it kind of, again, um, overlaps a little bit with the topic or facet number two and facet number three. So that's a, a general overview. Um, let's see here. It's been five and a half minutes now. So that's uh, Bartonella and Babesia in about five and a half minutes. Um, I hope that gave you the type of information that you were looking for about this topic. Um, so say, speaking to the person who asked this question, if uh, you or anybody else has any further questions on this topic or any clarification questions, feel, feel free to post in the comment section below. And otherwise, I will leave it there for now.